Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In the previous video I tested out what the shuttle could lift if its SRBs had been replaced by Raptor 9 boosters. Boosters that have 9 Raptor engines on the bottom of them each. And I promised that this time I would test out what would happen if we put new Glenn boosters on instead. And I didn't fully appreciate how horrible that would look. But let's zoom out. The thing is, New Glenn first stages are really, really tall. Especially if you allow for room uh, for the fins and everything. Because this uh, is actually the inner stage here, but that's where the fins go. Um... Yeah, I didn't have that as a separate part, otherwise I could probably have gotten rid of some of that, but still, they're really tall and awkward. And then, uh, even if uh, they weren't really tall, we'd have to probably move them down because of these fins down here. So, yeah. <laughs> um, now, total mass-wise, they're not too different. I'm... We don't know exactly what kind of burn time they've got, but I've gone with the numbers from B14643.de. That's a fairly common source for rocket things. And uh, so we have burn time for the new Glenn boosters at 166 seconds, uh, 2 minutes and 46 seconds. And we'll reserve fuel for their return, though, of course, the new Glenn boosters return to a barge or drone ship or whatever. And yeah, but it's gonna be a little bit awkward. I'm expecting tragedy when we separate off the boosters. Oh well, um, with the it looks like symmetry did not work very well for the separatrons here, so I'm gonna have to put the separatrons on individually. I think I'll fix that in a sec. But yeah, I mean we've got all these fins poking out, and then the shuttle wing being very vulnerable. Can we really separate off these new Glenn boosters safely? That is a good question. I have kept 64 tons in the bay. I don't know if we'll be able to lift that. We'll see. But that's what we're going with as the first test. All right, let me fix the subtrons and I will meet you on the pad. Okay, last time the shuttle's elevons were actually touching these bits on the platform and the boosters were clipped in. This time the Elevon is nowhere near that thing and the boosters are going all the way down here in a worrying some fashion. But okay, okay. <laughs> I still believe this platform does not have a collider on it, so we we will hope for the best. Let me we'll just run the the launch script as is and see what happens, I think. So, with that being the plan, run. It's just called Shuttle Raptor, so. Uh, Raptor, and make sure that uh, atmospheric autopilot's disabled. Oh. Really don't need the fins actuating, but oh well, well. Okay, still safe. So can we do 64 tons? Again, total mass is actually a little bit more than the shuttle Raptor situation. The boosters are actually a bigger, a little bit bigger in diameter, and of course, quite a bit longer. Though that includes the landing leg area. Well, how is it going to shape up? I don't know. I mean, you've got more thrust, you've got more fuel, and you've got less efficiency. Could work either way. The shuttle sure looks small in this situation, huh? We need a bigger shuttle. So I saw various suggestions for what the payload capacity could be. 45 tons, I saw 55 tons. I don't think I saw 64 tons or anything on that level. But we may be 
overdoing it here. We'll see. Somebody had asked me whether I was gonna do a series. I think I've mentioned this before. I'm making parts that would go in the latter part of a tech tree. Well, basically I want to do a career mode that starts in the year 2000, but we don't have a whole lot of stuff that would fit a tech tree that starts in the year 2000. Everything is sort of oldish. And so I'm, I've been busying myself making these parts that would go into a tech tree that starts in the year 2000. And once I'm satisfied I have the stuff I want, then uh, I'll look into starting a career mode in the year 2000. But of course I have to create the career mode because RP1 doesn't do that. That's not how RP1 is set up, so I'll have to look into creating this RP2000 that I've wanted. But yeah, I figured we'd need a lot more parts to fill up a tech tree that starts in 2000, so I've been handling that business for a little bit. Not so much this week though, this week has been a little bit weird. <laughs> reasons that I hope are obvious. It will stop the boosters at the same time that we stop the Raptor boosters. Now in this case I think they'll have somewhat less fuel but we'll see. It depends on the net effect of throttling down once again. We'll see what kind of stage time they have left. This sure looks weird though. I wouldn't blame anybody for not being particularly happy with this arrangement. And we're gonna get a load of how the fins go in a sec. Well, in about 12 seconds. But we might, it might be prudent to, well, we're gonna uh, hit a thrall down point soon, I think. Yeah, it's starting to thrall down here, but we probably want to reserve more than this. That wasn't too bad. Oh god, what happened to the nose? Oh god, oh no. No, that's not good. Um, I don't know why the nose cones went off though. What's that about? Oh, maybe there was a uh, decoupling there. Because it's an interstage. Alright, well... Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, well, I fixed a nose cone issue. I doubled up some of the uh, little uh, separatrons in the hope that we would separate a little bit better, uh, move some of them, and we'll see if the net effect is a proper separation or not. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, it's dodgy. It's dodgy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So here we go again with this contraption. I mean, while I can see using the Raptor edition, the Raptor 9 edition, I don't anticipate this one ever getting launched again after this video. So, yeah. This is a one time only deal. Okay, approaching separation time again. Here we go. So, 18 seconds. It keeps about 17 seconds in. Okay. Alright, alright. I think they're good. I think we're continuing. So, they're reserving 17 seconds, which is not bad, actually. Especially for a drone ship landing. Um, especially, and also in relation to their burn time, which is a little bit less than the Raptor 9 boosters have. Okay, well, let's see. Still 64 tons in the bay. Okay, we are rolling. Numbers 
numbers still look good for the 64 tons at the moment. Okay, we're getting to the last little bit here, and I think this is about right. We'll see, I'll leave a little bit in the external tank, but that's to be expected. We certainly don't want to get to the point where it drains the external tank completely. Okay... And 201 meters per second left, 57 kilometers. Oh, did it not decouple? Up, 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 up. There we go. I don't know why it didn't decouple properly. Okay, and... Oh, does it still not decouple? No, it's, it's sliding off. That's not the best thing for it to do at all. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, 200 meters per second left in the external tank, I think. We're not going to cut that margin too much closer than that. Alright, well, looks like we are not going to... OMS right into the external tank, at least. The OMS engines aren't particularly great at accelerating, to be honest. We are, of course, a heavy load this time, though. Having the external tank right next to us really makes it clear how weak the OMS engines are. But they do what they need to do. Alright, that's Orbit. Program concluded. 242 by 160. And we've got 151 tons if we let go of the payload. We see that's 64 ton difference. And that leaves us with 420, so plenty there. Uh, let's go to the VAB and see what the absolute maximum would be. Let's say if we uh, brought our external tank Delta V down, so we allow the burn of an extra 150 meters per second, for instance. Oh, well, that's a lower number than I thought. It's, oh, because of staging, right. We have a little bit of a staging complication with the boosters. I had to avoid them separating off. Maybe I can... No, apparently not. Okay, uh, separating off the nose cones for no reason. And maybe we can put them back, that back where it was, so we get a uh, better read on things. So, um, yeah, let's get that down to 10,100 and see what that gives us. Uh, well, I'll say 70 tons again. Uh, personally, I probably wouldn't push it that far, and I'd go with 64 tons, but it's conceivable that this also could do 70 tons. And that's with the fins. Uh, each of those weigh 1.11 tons there. And the fins on top, uh, those weigh 0.4 tons. Oh, sorry, no. Um, that's just a taper ratio. Mass 0.35 tons each. And the nose cone, which weighs, wow, 11 tons. We really weighed this thing down. I don't think it ought to weigh 11 tons. I don't know why the procedural nose cones are that crazy. I mean, they could just put a fairing on top of that, and the fairing would definitely weigh less than 11 tons, for heaven's sakes. So that's probably overdoing it. We, we, I mean, we probably would get 70 tons out of it if we lightened that up a bit. Uh, so yeah, you know, either way, but I think the Raptor boosters look better because the engines are smaller because they have the high chamber pressure and the, the stage is smaller, so it all makes it look a lot better. And it's probably safer to decouple those as well. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.